Well, I crabbed when I was a kid with my father, you know, 50 years ago. Oh, we could set, you know, two or three pots off the dock and catch enough to, for the family to feed on and eat for a weekend. Well, when I, when I grew up, the, uh, we had what was called, or still is called, water view. And I could go to sleep at night and look out my window and see the Rappahannock and certainly different phases of the moon. I mean, it just sparkled. And the sun, it's like diamonds on the water. And it, um, you know, there's just something deep and satisfying and uh, peaceful about the river. Well, I think, um, I think back to when I was a kid, really, uh, which um, is when I was really crabbing a lot. And that was actually in the, um, in the um, early 80s, late 70s, early 80s, OK? And um, we used to spend our time in a little 12-foot boat. And, and we could go out and scrape pilings for crabs and come back with a bushel of nice jimmies in an hour and a half. And um, nowadays, that's, you just don't see that happening. Well, the mission of Friends of the Rappahannock is to be the voice and the active force for a healthy and scenic Rappahannock River. And the reason we say voice is because the river doesn't have a voice of its own. Someone needs to speak for it. I always like to say when I went to school and things that I lived on the healthiest river in the state of Virginia. But what I never knew until I worked for Friends of the Rappahannock is that it really isn't the healthiest river in the state of Virginia. We have the largest dead zone um, which is caused by nitrogen, phosphorus, and sediment. The nitrogen is really, really bad because it creates those algae blooms. And so if there's too much algae in the river and in the bay, that's algae pollution. And then when it dies, it will create the dead zones where there's no oxygen. So it's not even just the blue crabs that can't survive because they don't have oxygen, but all of your shellfish on the bottom will suffocate, all of your plant life will suffocate, like nothing can live without oxygen. Depleted oxygen winds up coming into that area. Uh, it could possibly drift over into an area where you're crabbing at. So there, there has been some problems. I've pulled pots that's been dead as a doornail. Have a whole pot chock full of crabs and they're all dead. We catch our most dead crabs in this area right here. And I don't know if it's because of the marina or the flow of the water, but for some reason they don't live as well over here. Nitrogen and phosphorus come from fertilizers, animal waste, human waste, waste treat, wastewater treatment plants. Um, it comes from a variety of sources, fertilizer being one of the biggest ones. But um, what the scientists have shown us is that um, spring fertilization, while it kind of seems intuitive, plants are growing, time to give them fertilizer, it actually ends up with a lot of that fertilizer being washed away in spring rain. Yeah, the Chesapeake Club was, was really built for groups just like us. You know, they, they put together the resources for Save the Crabs and a lot of the PR material and did all the focus groups on the interesting, fun, quirky little ads that you see on the TV. Spring rains carry excess fertilizer to our sewers and rivers. It travels to the Chesapeake Bay where blue crabs have been rapidly disappearing. They suffocate slowly from lack of oxygen. No crabs should die like this. They should perish in some hot, tasty, melted butter. Mm. So hold off on the fertilizer until fall, because ridding the planet of delicious backfin is just plain wrong. The goal for the Save the Crabs program is to reduce the nutrient load. We use the blue crabs to get people's attention because, like I said, it's about the nutrient load. It's about the fertilizer. It's about the health of the river. But people aren't really going to care about it because it's out of sight, out of mind. But if you like to eat your blue crabs, that makes it more personal. And then they actually want to be involved in the campaign. And I think the slogan that the Chesapeake Bay Club created was great. Save the crabs and eat them because that really makes you think and that makes people ask questions about it. In the Northern Egg Peninsula, 90% of the farmers have nutrient management plans. And what I feel like a lot of people don't understand is that the farmer does everything that they can to save money, not waste fertilizers, and do what they need to do. 
many people don't understand that they typically think of farmers as plow, plowing their land and we just don't do that anymore. They say the crab campaign is concerned about timing of fertilizer. I don't believe it applies to us. Uh, we do apply fertilizer in the fall. We just put down enough to get a crop established. It starts at home. It starts with the homeowner. That is where the power is with the people who don't even realize how big of an impact they're having on the river. Living is about decision making and choices and we all have those choices to make and hopefully the choices like to just if you do fertilize your lawn to do it just in the fall uh, because you don't people don't think as much in a city that their runoff is going to get into a river but indeed their runoff gets into a river it's like a domino one thing affects and then that's all crashing down. So we need to work on this together, all of us. You know, we are by no means have the right to tell anybody what to do. It's something that a person needs to feel a connection to the river, to the crabs, really just to the population that we have and the economy that we have. And they need to take the pledge themselves to make a difference. We got 243 pledges this year. And with each pledge, that keeps 3.5 pounds of fertilizer out of the river. This year, we kept uh, about 850 pounds of nitrogen and phosphorus. I think it's an admirable goal because that symbolizes saving the crabs, symbolizes saving all the bay and all the, the fauna and the life that lives in the, in the water. And the river itself means so much to me. It's about making that commitment to your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren that one day you want to see the crabs and you want to have the same experiences that you may have grown up with. Overall, if we can get the crab population up and, and keep it up um, and, and bring it back, I would love to see it back to the levels that they were at when I was a kid. Go, go. My goal, I, I, my personal goal would be that we have a healthier river and a, certainly a healthier bay and a healthier world. But I just want, I want us to, to be able to share this, this gift that we have because I don't see that I really own this property. I see that it's just a gift and it's my time to have it. Keep supporting the, the cause and uh, Try to keep everybody educated on what's happening out here in our water. Try to keep this water healthy and clean.